In the previous tutorial on fluid simulation, we have learned how to set up a fluid container like this bowl and fill it with a liquid. In this tutorial, we will drop an object into this bowl and create a splash like this, followed by some overflow of the liquid from the bowl using the EV engine. So, let us start with the base file for this tutorial. Here, we have already created a glass bowl, which works as an effector. We will first add a flow object and a domain object, and fill this bowl with some liquid. Then we will drop a small cube into this. Let us go to the Add menu, and add one UV sphere. Now, resize it by 0.5. We need to move it up a little bit within the bowl. Let us go to the front view mode. This will be our flow object. We don't want to move it very high, because it will then create a turbulence in the liquid, and part of the liquid can then overflow from the bowl. And we cannot also keep it lower than this, otherwise it will intersect with the bowl, and create fluid leaks. You need to determine the perfect position based on the size of your bowl, or the container. Now, in order to convert this little sphere, into a flow object, select the sphere and go to the physics tab. Turn on the fluid properties, and in the type field, please select flow. In the flow type, we have to select liquid. And in the flow behavior, please select inflow. We need to then add a domain here. So go to the add menu, and add a cube. Let us enlarge this domain object by 2.5. And, we will also turn on the wireframe view mode. We should actually move the domain upward, little bit, in order to capture the splashing effect of the liquid. So, go to the object properties, and move it up by say, 2 units. If you are new to fluid simulation, you can first watch our previous tutorial, where we have discussed all the basic settings of a fluid simulation. The link is in the video description. In order to set up this cube as a fluid domain, go to its physics tab. Turn on the fluid properties and in the type field, please select domain. Next, in this domain type, we have to select liquid. And in the resolution divisions, we will use 64. You should actually use a much higher value, like 256, otherwise you may notice some unusual gaps between the liquid container and the fluid that it contains. Since we are using a lower resolution for this tutorial, we have actually used a duplicate copy of this bowl, which is little bigger in size, and it is hidden, but it is indeed the effector for our fluid simulation here, not the bowl we see. You can either follow this technique, or you have to use some higher value for this resolution divisions. Now, scroll down below, and enable this fractional obstacles option. And reduce this obstacle distance to zero, this will result in better interaction with the effector. Let us change the end frame of this simulation to 150, just to match with our animation length. Then start the simulation. The fluid is filling our bowl nicely. Somewhere along here, we need to stop the flow, because the bowl is almost full. If we keep the flow on, it will generate excess liquid, which will overflow and come out of this container. Let us go back and check at frame number 40. We can see the bowl already got enough liquid, so we will disable the flow object at this point. Let us select the flow object. We can actually rename this sphere to flow and also rename this object to Fluid Domain. Now for the flow object, we are currently at frame number 40. And the Use Flow option is enabled. Let us insert a keyframe here. Now, go to the next frame number. Deselect the Use Flow option and insert a keyframe. So from this frame onward, the flow object will not add any more liquid into this system. We can actually hide the flow object from the display. Now, we need to add an object, which we will drop into this fluid. So, go to the Add menu, and add one cube. Let us resize it to 0.1. We need to then move this object upward, to some height. Maybe like this. This distance actually controls the nature, and the amount of the splash. For this example, let us set the height as, 6.5. It depends also on the size of the fluid container. You can experiment with different values for this height, and find out what works best for you. We can move this object downward in two ways, either we can animate its height, by adding suitable keyframes to its z-location, or we can take help of the rigid body simulation in Blender. For this tutorial, we will use the rigid body physics. So, go to the physics tab, and enable the rigid body option. The type should be active. 
And this dynamic property determines when the object will start moving. Obviously, we want it to drop only when the bowl is completely full and the flow has stopped. So, go to frame number 40. Deselect this dynamic option and insert a keyframe here. Then go to the next frame. Enable this dynamic property and insert another keyframe. As a result, this cube will start falling only after frame number 41. We need to also convert this bowl into a rigid body because the cube should fall, then hit this bowl and stay in it. So select it and in the physics tab, enable its rigid body properties. Here the type should be passive because the bowl will stay as it is and the cube will fall into it. Coming below, we have to change the shape option because this is a hollow object. So instead of the default convex hull, we have to select the mesh option. If we don't make this change for the bowl, the cube will fall and remain on the upper surface, it won't get inside the bowl. So, we are done with this rigid body setup. But we also need to set up this cube as an effector, so that it creates splashes when it comes below, inside this bowl. So select this cube again, and in the physics tab, let us first collapse this rigid body thing, and enable its fluid properties. In the type field, please select effector. And, let us also enable this, is planar option. We have to now refresh the fluid cache, so select the domain object. We can either manually delete the cache files from here, or we can just make some cosmetic changes in the resolution divisions, so that Blender is forced to refresh the fluid cache. Now, go back to the first frame, and start the simulation. The cube object will start falling down after frame number 40, creating a splash in the bowl, followed by some overflow of the liquid. So overall it looks nice, now we can bake this data, and see how it comes out in the actual render. Let us select the domain object. Down below in the physics tab, we have to change the cache type from replay to modular. Also enable this is resumable option. Then start the bake data process. We can see the progress here. Once this is complete, we have to expand the liquid section. Then scroll down and enable the mesh option. Finally, click on Bake Mesh. Here is the status. Once this is also done, let us turn on the rendered view mode. And let us add a material for this cube. So go to the Materials tab and create a new material. Let us pick up some red color for this. Then select the domain object, which is our fluid, and create a new material for this. We will go with the default white material only. Maybe we can remove the specular value from here. Let us then go to the first frame and start playing the simulation. The bowl is filling with the milk, up to frame number 40, and then the cube falls into it, creating a splash, as expected. Let us also look at it from a close distance. You can set up a better material for the fluid, maybe like transparent water or cold drinks, and get a fancy result. And if you use higher resolution divisions for the domain, the texture of the fluid and the splash will be far more accurate. For this tutorial, we just focused on the falling body and the related physics. Now, you may feel that there is too much overflow from the bowl. We can actually control this by changing the size of the cube in its scale property and its initial height. Together they determine the splash volume. Let us change this height to 10 meter to create a deeper impact on the milk. But we have to reduce this size. A bigger size cube will create more displacement and overflow, but we want a higher splash and only limited overflow. So, we will change it to 0 0.05. Let us then select our domain object. We can change one more parameter in the physics tab for a fancy outcome. So scroll down below and please expand this section called field weights. You will see a gravity field here. If we reduce this value to say 0.5, the splash will go higher and look even better. It affects only the fluid and no other object in the scene. Finally, free the baked data and then bake it again. Once this is complete, scroll down below and like the last time, bake the mesh as well. It will take some time to finish. Then go to the first frame and start the simulation. You can adjust the start frame number of the scene, so that it starts directly from frame number 40 onward, with the bowl full of milk, skipping the initial filling part. 
Okay, we have a far better result this time. Once the fluid simulation is baked, you can replace the tiny cube with a bigger object to make the scene visually more appealing. Please take this only as a guide and play with the settings we have discussed here to get the perfect effect that you need for your scene. So, I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.